Today, Sussex needs to feel like Scotland. Tim's about to head north for the Red Hind Cull. He wants to make sure that he's happy with his kit and prepared for everything the Highlands can throw at him. So I'm off to Scotland in two weeks time. I'll be taking my hunting rifle, be a lot lighter than this, this beast. Most of my shooting is between 150 and say 250 yards. I need to practice that, but I'm really, really looking forward to that. And getting down here, practicing is the best way to kind of get myself fully, fully ready for quite a tough hunting week, actually. We can shoot a lot of beasts, we've got to drag them off a hill and be tired, so therefore practice makes perfect. Joining us today are some friends who love playing with their drones. The images certainly give a sense of scale. This southern landscape may not be as harsh as north of the border, but the distances between rifle and target will be the same. Whilst this is a road target, all I'm interested in today is actually the kill zone of a red deer. The red deer kill zone is bigger than my hand, so we've got the heart over here and we go further back towards the lungs. So I've got to concentrate and basically get, make sure all my bullets are placed within about an eight inch, nine inch area here. So let's make sure we can do that today. Probably out to 200 meters, I don't expect a lot of wind, maybe two or three inches. We're slightly sheltered here. Beyond 200 meters, I think hopefully we'll demonstrate actually we've got quite a bit of deviation on the wind and we've got to judge that. And that's probably one of the things I need to practice the most. Tim is starting at 100 metres and moving out to 300 metres to see just how the wind is affecting the shot. I've got 150 yards zero using 125 grain 308 bullet. Quite a fast bullet, but I find it really, really useful to culling hinds. We're 100 metres at the moment and with this wind, the wind's gusting from 10 to about 18 miles an hour. But I'm quite surprised actually is that I've tried some headshots and we've got about two inch of windage. That wouldn't have been a safe shot in the deer. I would have, would have actually jaw shot it, which is not the thing you want to do. So very much a day actually in these conditions is only shooting the heart and the lungs. It's simple as that. So uh, an interesting thing to note today. So the wind is making a big impression even at this short distance. But Tim's simulated hind stalk involves more than wind. He takes his role play very seriously. Practice getting dirty. Uh, um, because it, it does happen, it does happen all the time, you know. And uh, if you've got a bright shiny kit and you're not used to operating it in muddy conditions or very cold conditions, uh, you need to practice it. When there's thick snow down here, the first thing I do is grab my rifle and spend about two or three hours shooting in snow. And the, the rifle gets absolutely filthy dirty and wet but it's good practice and that's what it's all about. It's very similar to what Scotland's all about. Exposure is a real consideration on the hill and as a rifle and kit reviewer, he's keen to put clothing to the test too. It's not bad weather we talk about. Uh, it's actually bad kit. Um, today is actually not that wet, even though it's quite muddy, it's quite windy, and it's quite warm here. But um, have the proper kit. I've got some Harkila Pro Hunters, which I've had for a few years now, so I've pretty well tested them. I think they're absolutely brilliant. And I've got some, some, a new addition to the UK, a, a woodline jacket. It's absolutely brilliant. I actually really enjoy this. It's got some un, in, unusual features. It's got these kind of stretchable panels here uh, around the shoulders. And they, if you buy the trousers, the actual trousers have got stretchable pan, panels in your groin. So it, they are very, very comfortable to wear. We're now back out at 300 metres and the wind has plenty of chances to influence the bullet. To show just how much Tim is going to shoot at the rose bottom. To demonstrate the amount of windage today, I'm going to aim at the very back end of my row target. Right at the very, on its tail, and we'll hopefully see the, uh, the bullet placement, the point of impact, 12 to 14 inches. So let's do that. So I'm aiming at the back of the deer, hopefully we'll see the, the impact there. We've got 300 metres and we've got probably about a foot to 18 inches of wind here. And so to, to accurately judge that is very, very hard and I question it should be done at all. My view is really if you're shooting anything like this, if you have to use your wind adjustment, I'd suggest you probably don't shoot the animal at all, quite honestly. Holding over maybe a, a foot or so to judge the wind is, 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 is fine, but uh, anything more than that and you start having to adjust your scope, I question whether you should really be shooting the animal. Just a personal point of view, but when you're actually shooting live game, I think one's going to be a wee bit careful. So just, just bear that in mind. If you're trying to shoot a, a nine inch kill zone on a, on a, a red hind, you know, you've actually got to be aiming way over here somewhere to get that. So I think it's a shot I wouldn't actually want to take, quite honestly. If these are the conditions Tim will be faced with in Scotland, he'll certainly be getting a bit closer to the hinds. And today has reinforced the fact that you need to know your limits.